Cool. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Brave and the Boys podcast. We are very excited to introduce our guest. We have Sal from Comic Pop and Comic Pop Returns. Yeah, both channels. There we go. Subscribe to both of them. Otherwise, you're not a real fan. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll know. Yeah, yeah, we'll know. We'll check. Um, yep. No, we're we're really excited to, to talk to you, man. Like we were just telling you off off stream for a second. Like we've watched you for a long time. Um, I was watching you on Word Balloon last week and I was like, come on, don't steal all the good questions. <laughs> no, thankfully, that was just a uh, stream of conscience. That had nothing. That, that was that devolved into no interview. Uh, I mean, at this point, John doesn't need to interview me. He's yeah, he's lived the more interesting life. I would much rather ask him <laughs> questions than he asked me. Uh, but yeah, no, that was a lot of fun too. But that was just, I, I was like that, this went off the rails real fast. So it hopefully did, I, you did good though. I mean, like even when he dipped out on the interview, like you just took it over, like it was your own show. And I was like, consummate professional, man. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, man. That that's happened to me so many times on my own show where like people drop out or the audio drops out and you know, it, it, a lot of learning, uh, going on, like a lot of on the job learning happening uh mm -hmm. in this gig as i'm sure you found out like i'm sure you've done a live stream or a just a recording and nothing recorded or we didn't get audio or the audio okay. sucks or yeah yeah we we our first because we took like a, about a year break from doing our show and our first episode back like the audio mirrored or did some weird looping thing yeah yeah and it was just like oh yeah and that's but, just know. like well I, th there's no fixing that and you hope there no, is yeah. and you dump it into something and you futz with it and it's like Yep. There's just nothing I can do with this. You go to an Odyssey, you try to mess with the tracks, you, mm -hmm. and nothing fixes it. And you go, well, it's content, so you publish it anyway. Exactly. Or... And then you're like, yeah. ah, but you hate it because it's not what you know it should be. Yeah, I know. I was I feel like I'm my harshest critic, you know, but um yeah. it's it's fun, man. Yeah. It's um, a good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay so usually what we do on our show and we'll do this part quickly because we don't want to waste our time with you is we like to show off what we got as our hauls this week Ooh. so to give you a little bit of a background uh me and jordan are more so primarily like collected editions collectors okay so i mean he, we, we we've done some single issues i think jordan still buys more single issues than i do but um i guess for me it was i had a move and then i realized that like i don't really see my collection all that often it was just in boxes in another room yeah um and I started making the change to like um, more so omnibuses or oversized hardcovers. And um, for me, like that's been a more enjoyable way to like, like collect. So yeah, I have a couple of hauls. One of them was a little disappointing. Um, I bought what I thought was a good deal on a used absolute that's been out of print and I'm going to have to return it. Um, oh, so I'll show that off first. So I've been trying to buy absolute justice for a while. Okay. And um I finally bought it, and then it turns out I bought Absolute Justice League, The World's Greatest Superheroes, which is an amazing book, another Alex Ross book. By, yeah. uh, and I love and I've read it, and it's amazing, but I didn't realize I was buying that book. I was trying to buy Justice. Yeah. Um, but it was like the last couple of minutes on the eBay bid, so I was just, you know, hurrying. So then to a couple of days ago, I found another, you know, Absolute Justice. This was actually the right book. It said it was in perfect condition. It was only going for like 100 bucks, and I got it. And it came with no slip case and it was like stolen from a library. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. I didn't even know libraries carried absolutes. Uh, yeah. If they're donated. Yeah. Typically that's what it is. Here's what I found. So that was my one. Uh, <laughs> um, so you're getting loss. rid of that. You're going to, yeah, I'm going to return that, you know, Yeah. but you know, eventually I'll get that. You know what? I think this is just a sign that I have to get the deluxe, you know, exactly. <laughs> or wait for a reprint, dude. Yes. Yeah, um, that happens very often with EC. The next book is actually Jordan's book. So um, I'm a big in stock trades fan. Um, are you? So oh, yeah. Oh, I what use I that do, a lot now. Yeah. In stock what, trades. Yeah. yeah. What I like to do when I'm bored at work is I'll just refresh through the damage section because mm -hmm. I've bought in like seven books off there and everyone's been in perfect condition. Yeah. And you get even bigger discounts. So for like 35 bucks or 38 bucks, he got the Frank Miller Daredevil. Hey. Ooh. And it looks like it's in perfect condition. Mm -hmm. yeah. last podcast i think i even said that if i was to start reading daredevil the first one i would get was the frank miller one it's not a bad place to start so, absolutely yeah. and literally i mean and and so a little bit of background on me is i've been a dc collector uh, and reader for a majority of my time in comics um but just this year i started into marvel and um all i've read so far is the two uh, bendis daredevils and the two brubaker daredevils so that's not bad it's been amazing <laughs> yeah like, i'll bet just the way they flew, like they flowed into each other was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so I got a couple more to show off. Nice. Um, this we I got in, uh, they reprinted it, um, or they did like a restock, so it's still out of print, I think. But um, I had number two already, and I have Avengers one, so hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have Hick Avengers. Nice. Um, which I mean, we could talk about the news that they announced yesterday, yeah. So, um, that sounds pretty exciting. What are your thoughts on uh, them going back into the Ultimate Universe? I have been waiting for this, man. I, uh, I'm uh, I like the Ultimate Universe. I love Ultimate Spider-Man. I noticed that mm -hmm. like Ultimate Peter ain't in the teaser image. It's about Miles, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, but also I'm like, what Ultimate Universe are they going to go with? Because there have been like three people who have kind of teased the Ultimate Universe. And it's been uh, Cates, Hickman, and Bendis. Like every time that Bendis was at Marvel towards the latter part of his uh, time there, he would occasionally dip in, especially in like Spider-Man and Spider-Man mm -hmm. 2. He'd be like, this is what's going on in the Ultimate Universe. And everybody would be like, didn't Hickman kill it? Isn't it dead? Is there an Ultimate Universe at all? And they were like, oh, no, yeah. Uh, uh, well, that's not the real Ultimate Universe. Or that's not the Ultimate Universe that I'm working on. And then there's mm -hmm. Cates, who's like, I just want to work in the Ultimate Universe. I want to like play with it and maybe like resurrect it. So he puts all that Maker stuff into his Venom run. And Hickman, I know, has designs on the Maker since he invented the character. And it's like, uh, I, I'm, I'm excited that we're finally getting something called Ultimate, as mm -hmm. opposed to just like flirting with the idea of dipping our toe back in the universe. It's like every creator who wants to play with Ultimates is like, do I, do, like, do I need to prove to the editor that this is something people want? Or do I have to like flirt with it first? Like, why can't we just say we're doing this? Uh, so I'm I'm excited that we're getting some declaration. This is the ultimate universe. Look at the cover. It's Brian Hitch, like Brian Hitch art. And that immediately makes you think ultimates. And so I'm down. Um, I, I wonder how much survived after the incursions. And I'm yeah. clearly, I, clearly Hickman's going to answer that question because he's the guy who killed it in the first place. <laughs> I mean, re remember Bendis's uh, ultimate, whatever the big fight during the incursions. And it was like, there's nothing here like this is I don't even know what it's supposed to be. And so I'm excited to see like someone actually say this is what the ultimate universe is going to be going forward. My only concern is my favorite part of it was Spider-Man. And yeah. I, mm -hmm. I don't want anyone else to touch it. But hey, um, Bendis could come back and do Spider-Man. again <laughs> If he wants to continue. Yeah. I would be okay with that. I think a lot of people would agree with me. But yeah, no, I'm hyped. How about you guys? Oh, I'm I'm really excited just because um, I haven't, like I said, I'm pretty new to Marvel, but um, so far I've collected uh, Ultimate Spider-Man 1, Ultimate Spider-Man 2, and Miles Morales 1, mm -hmm. and the Ultimates. So I, I feel like this is going to be perfect timing for me because I'm most of what I'm going to get into is going to be the Ultimate stuff. So right. I, it's not like I have to wait, you know, a long time for them to to bring it back you know yeah that's true no it's a nice uh nice dovetail from like getting acclimated to that universe to being you know immersed in like the newest version of it so you'll actually be able to go oh um uh no you're doing it wrong because <laughs> i was just reading the old stuff and i can tell you that's not that's not what was going on I kind of feel it's like a, I got one of my friends recently into Ted Lasso and she's like, wait, I have to wait three weeks for the new season. And I'm like, I've been waiting a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it really three weeks from the next season? That's awesome. Yeah. yeah like uh, three Ooh. weeks. I think we get Mandalorian and Ted Lasso, which are the two shows I'm looking forward Fine to. Next by me. Oh my yeah. gosh. So um, what you're saying is I need to get my Apple TV subscription back on or same that $4.99 yeah. a month, you know, <laughs> it's the cheapest <laughs> one. And yeah, this is the only one that I kill off every time. Oh yeah, no, same here. I, I've been I've been working off of Apple points. Like I haven't paid for Apple TV yet, uh, so we'll see what happens. That's awesome. I got one last book to show, and this one was actually kind of a favor I got. So, um, are you f familiar at all with the YouTube series uh, or YouTube channel Near Mint Condition on on YouTube? Of course, yeah. No, I'm, okay, cool. I know Omar. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, we're we're part of his Discord, and one of the uh, people in the Discord, I guess there's a group uh, in the Discord called like ollie's united or something so it's people who live near ollie's okay. and one of them got me uh absolute preacher three for like 30 bucks mm, and shipped it to me that's so awesome. i'll just have to wait till number one gets reprinted later this year and i'll have all three of them that's awesome um so cool. i'm really excited and i love the tv show so yeah. i'm excited to read just, it 
just a shout out for the for our nice commenters. Uh, what's up, James? And then for Josh, I, I really like that comment, the one that you just pulled up right now. Uh, the manga weights are a struggle as well as anime weights. For yeah. instance, uh, Attack on Titan season <sighs> four part. Is it three now that's going to be releasing? I don't know. It it sucks. It's been forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Awesome, man. I guess uh, our first question would be like, what got you interested or started in comic books uh, when you were first starting off? Like, like uh like talking about them or um, or like uh like what got you into them? yeah so what got you into reading them when you were younger and then what led you to you starting a youtube channel uh there there's a big gap between that like you know reading them and then youtube obviously but uh the first part with reading them you know i uh, i was always familiar with superheroes uh you know i i gravitated towards the big ones i was a big i was a big batman fan i was a big spider-man fan um and i was immediately attracted to just like the concept of batman was awesome he looked great uh spider-man's costume really appealed to me i was like that guy looks awesome his his powers were so unique and interesting i wanted to know more about it and uh so while batman was a character that i just kind of enjoyed in the pop culture world you know, I went to see his movies and I read some of his comics, but for the most part, it was it was a lot of like old golden age, silver age stuff. It wasn't really like the day to day. Like I was not reading regularly Batman, but Spider-Man was one of those characters where I'm like, if you have a Spider-Man comic book at all, I'm reading it. And so that was what got me into reading comic books regularly. And of course, because Marvel is savvy about like trying to expand their world through their characters, you know, like Spider-Man invariably would appear beside some other character that I didn't recognize. And I'd need to know who that is. And then I have to learn more about that. And so I eventually became more uh, acclimated and understand uh, and interested in the Marvel universe as a whole and got into different characters and teams. And then of course, like by that time, you know, cartoons were really like picking up some of the slack that the comic book world um you know help uh, benefited from and so i'd be like oh, okay so this is the x-men this is spider-man this is the fantastic four or this is the avengers and i got to pick my to pick and choose my favorites based pretty much through that lens and uh <clears throat> and then uh i i don't remember at what point i picked up a wizard magazine but that was what helped me kind of like get into the world of comics and understand that like there were people that made them and they have names and they have like ideas and they can be interviewed and they can give you insights into how those books are made. And, uh, but that was a big, uh, help getting me into understanding the comic book world and understanding how comics are made by and large. And, uh, and so that was invaluable, uh, for my interest in that, in, in that, um, in that, hobby and then uh you know i and i read them and it, it, my interest expanded and uh and then eventually i just kind of dropped off because of one reason or another um typically it's the clone saga the clone saga was the thing that went like oh this is not going well um and it was the betrayal of like oh peter isn't the real peter and i'm like oh this is this is nonsense so i would drop off and uh, spider-man would be the result of me quitting and restarting a number of times but uh and i think you've mentioned that was it brand new day or one new day or whatever it was one of the other ones one more day um, was the yeah. was the big one that made me go like i gotta get out of here and uh <laughs> and i dropped off for a while but you know it i never really left and that was kind of a big uh that, that was kind of a fun realization later on because i would i would kind of trade comics for film and i was a big fan mm -hmm. of movies and the idea of movies and my parents really responded to movies more than comic books in a big way so that really helped me go like oh i should probably focus more effort into that anyway um and it's not a big jump from comics to movies anyway but uh but eventually uh i would you know do all the things that a young person does you know go to high school college and then afterwards uh you know inherit my old bedroom and wonder what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And uh, I pursued teaching and it was uh, it was a weirdly unnecessarily arduous task. And so I'd have a lot of like downtime or uh, periods of like frustration. And what I would do to pass the time besides read some comic books is uh, watch YouTube because it had been like new around that time. So I was watching YouTube and I was like, I, I gravitated towards a couple of them. Um, and uh, the one that really got me into it was, was Phil DeFranco. I was watching uh, Phil hey. DeFranco show and I was like, 
this guy, uh, he's, you know, he's entertaining and he's informing. There's like a professionalism about him that I didn't get from other, uh, you know, YouTube shows. And I didn't really have like a, I wasn't like watching it all. You know, I wasn't like everything that's YouTube is me is now going into my head. But uh, through him, I was introduced to things that he like around the same time. <clears throat> he got like seed money from YouTube to generate other things like source fed. And that got me uh, hooked as well. And watching what they were doing and how they were like making their things was very evocative of the stuff that I wanted to be doing. And I'd be like shooting videos with my friends that were review shows to no audience. And like when I say no audience, I don't mean like there was virtually no audience. I mean, like they'd be filmed and then they would just sit on a like, you know, on a desk <laughs> and never be viewed. Uh, so I was preparing <coughs> for this concept my whole life. Um, by like shooting movies and shooting shows with my friends and then watching Phil and the gang do that over at source. And I'm like, this is, this is what I want to do. Um, or at the very least, this is adjacent to what I want to do. Cause of course, like when I was a kid and I wanted to make movies I watched Kevin Smith movies and I'm like, Oh, I could make movies. <laughs> and I made one and I'm like, this was hard. And not only was it hard, but it was unrewarding. And so I'm like, but I, but I had a lot of fun on certain aspects of it. Editing, for example, um, working with a, with a, with a team. And uh, so I, I applied that to the YouTube thing. And I'm like, I think I can bridge these interests. So I started making YouTube videos about movies because obviously, and of course lost in an ocean of content. And then I noticed that all the comic book uh, like f shows that I would produce were getting more traction. And I was like, this, I was, you know, I was having more fun talking about comics anyway, than trying to like come up with something original to say that someone else who's doing it better than me is saying better, you know? Yeah. Like I, I could talk about there will be blood, but if I saw a reviewer who's very similar to me doing a better job of it, then why would anyone watch that? Like, why would anyone watch mine over his? And so I moved to comics and it eventually snowballed into uh, a career. That's, That's awesome, awesome, man. Thank you. And now you're what? You're like 500 episodes deep on back issues? Just about. We're almost to 500. We're very close. I know, actually, I should probably plan that out <laughs> just so I know and then I don't like miss it where I'm like, oh, crap, it's 501. Oh, OK, well, here's our big deal episode. Uh, so uh, here, here's a follow up question. And if you don't have an answer for this one, I 100 percent understand. Of course. Uh, who's your favorite source fed host? That's a great question uh, because they're so, and they're, they're all they're... watching right now. So they're oh, going to yeah. see yeah. every get a single lot of one text. of them. They're yeah. very busy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I really responded to the, the original trio. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be Lee Joe and Elliot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was really a big fan of Steve when he came on, like when he appeared and then uh, subsequently kind of inherited the nerd channel. Yeah, uh, I uh, I'm a big fan of Trisha Hirschberger. I think mm -hmm. she's like so funny and interesting and smart and she knows what she's doing and she has presence like you wouldn't believe. And uh, so she's pretty great. But uh, I don't know, man, I, I it, it had been Lee for a good long time. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it, I think any one of them alone doesn't do it for me, like seeing them all working together. Yeah. You know? So. I, I think that was my favorite too on uh, Source Fed Nerd, getting to see them not just do a show, but actually show their personality was yes. uh, a huge, po huge portion of me like coming back every day to watch a new episode. Exactly. No, and you yeah. and like they they created a kind of uh, like a cult of personality where you were you were not. I remember DeFranco created Source Fed in part. He was like, I want to make this into a kind of like platform for creative people to like build a career, leave. And then we bring in new people who build their career. And it's like, yeah. the brand is not that the yeah. brand is those people and you can add people to it. Mm -hmm. And they did. But when people mm -hmm. left and other people came in, there was a point where I'm like, this is not what I want anymore. And yeah. it, no, no, no shade to any of the newer hosts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Raina Scully was terrific as well, but, oh, yeah. uh, but there were, there were, there were some that I was like, this is not what I want to watch. Uh, Maud Garrett was great too. That, any of the female talent they had was fantastic. <laughs> I, I can definitely agree. Uh, just as a FYI, my favorite was always uh, Steve Zaragoza. Right? Yeah. He's pretty I, great. I still follow him on uh, on Twitter nowadays. 
So nice. He, he retweets very interesting things if you ever want to uh, <laughs> search into it. Um, yeah. I believe it. Yeah. yeah. It does not surprise me. But yeah. Cool, I guess uh, another question would be um, how do you handle like having a hobby be a career without like, struggling with like burnout and still loving them? Like, how do you, how do you juggle that? Uh, you know, bur burnout is always um, looming from the audience's perspective. Like I noticed that I never think about it. Like I never think about burnout. Uh, I've heard it bandied about. I hear my peers talking about it. Um, I know people who have burned out entirely, like burned out and left. And it only come like I only think about it when it comes up from the outside. Like when the audience goes, dude, I don't know when one of these days is going to burn out. And I'm like, okay, like I'm too stubborn and stupid and excited <coughs> to be burned out by any of this. So, okay. Like it's, it hasn't happened yet and I'm not feeling it, but uh, I, I don't, I don't do the traditional methods of staving off burnout. <clears throat> that you hear like from your favorite YouTubers who were like, Oh, you know, you got to make sure that you walk away after a certain amount of hours or, Oh, you got to give yourself like this, that, and the other thing, like to uh, diversify your interests and, you know, separate like, you know, work and life and stuff like that. And I, I don't really do that. Like uh, when I, when I, when I'm tired, I go to sleep when I'm hungry, I eat when I'm done editing, I walk away. I mean, like when I'm, when I'm editing, I notice that like, I can't just sit anymore like I used to for like seven hours and chop out a video. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't like it, nor am I burnt out on it. It's just a, it's just a new like approach to it. And so what I try and do to keep myself from getting frustrated or make mistakes is give myself breaks. And I just kind of like do something else, you know, and it doesn't have to be work. And that's one of those things that one of the lessons that I learned or taught to myself was like, make sure that you do differentiate between like what you're doing professionally and what you're doing <coughs> for fun. Like not everything is content, you know, like they yeah. always say like everything's content. And I, I'm very, I used to be much more like open to the idea of like everything is content and anything could be posted or anybody, you know, anything we do could be entertaining. And uh, I, I've, I've changed my tune on that one. So it's not so much burnout, but it is uh, trying to keep things from getting anywhere near that neighborhood. That's awesome. No. Um, Jake, did you want to go over uh, Josh's question in the comments? Yeah. So we got one question from Josh. And yeah. he said, after doing YouTube, what's an aspect of comic you comics you love now that you wish you that you wish younger you knew about? I think just the creators like I, I live uh, on the East Coast. I was in the shadow of New York City. I could have, especially in like the 90s, finagled visits to Marvel and DC Comics. I could have been going to Comic Cons with Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, you know, Alan Grant, uh, you know, any any creator that was working at the time. Norm Brayfogle would have been great to meet. You know, Darwin Cook would have been awesome. Any of the people oh. that are no longer with us, people who were going to these things and getting like no traffic or, you know, selling sketches for ten dollars, <laughs> like just being aware of the comic book fan scene and embracing it and being less like trepidatious about impressions and and uh, and, and 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 optics you know like i was like well I'm, i can't you know I, i'm different enough and i have enough time i'm like I, I've, i'm getting bullied and i'm having a hard enough time as it is i don't need to like go to comic-con on weekends like i'm trying to join the scouts or i'm trying to you know join the sport or i'm trying to do this that and the other. like you know i'm trying to be you know whatever <laughs> expects me to be at this point and uh the last thing i need is to like try and show somebody my sketch of you know of spider-man uh which nowadays would be awesome to have or to have had that experience but I am like, uh, I don't think about it too much because I also know that like, I'm an idiot. I was an idiot back then. I'm an idiot now, but I was a different kind of idiot back then. <laughs> and I, I, I feel like back then I would not have appreciated it. You know, yeah. like I remember there was one time and my parents offered it. They were like, oh, there's a comic book creator going to be at the mall. And they're doing a signing and you should go. And I'm like, why? You know, like, they make the books. I don't care about them. Like, I just want to read the books. <laughs> and so I go and it's at the mall. So it wasn't really far. It wasn't a big deal. But like, Scott McDaniel was there and you know, he's a great artist, but 
I didn't know him. I didn't read his books, you know? Like, so I was like, what is, you know, okay, cool. And, and so that kind of, that, that was the, the limit of my interaction with the comic book creator scene. But if I had known, you know, this, that was something that I wish that I could have done. I mean, it's yeah. pretty cool now though, that you get to make up for it by like, not only do you interview people, but you have a recurring like live yes. stream with, with comic book writers. Um, yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Um, that kind of, uh, I guess we can talk about some of your most favorite interviews, sure. but we could, before that we can get into this guy's question, which I think is kind of tangential to it. Mm -hmm. Um, do you ever get disappointed that videos like interviews don't perform as well as back issues? Did launching Comic Pop Returns help with that? Uh, Comic Pop Returns is the reason that like, we created Comic Pop Returns because those videos were not performing. But it was worse than that. It was actually because like nothing was performing and it was because YouTube changed the way that they factor videos. You know, It used to be that they were like, <laughs> make a place that like has a bunch of different content so that you appeal to a wider range of people. Mm -hmm. And so we did. And we had like a comic book review show. We have a regular podcast. And then we had back issues. And we had like an unboxing show. And we had an independent comic book show. And, you know, we, we, had, we had like 11 shows. And they varied from length of like 15 minutes to an hour to two hours. And YouTube was like, well, if on average your content doesn't factor in to a length of time that we can pin down and quantify, then you're a failure. Or if you have one show that a lot of your channel subscribers watch, but there's one show that only half of that audience watches, then your channel's a failure because it means that you're that half your audience is only interested half the time. And that's, that's, I think that's a fallacy, but it's certainly, yeah. And yeah. then they're like, well, but because no one's like only half your audience is watching like a third of the time, then it means your channel's a failure and we're going to diminish it. So we're not going to show it as often. We're not going to push it to subscribers as often. So we were being damaged by this like new unspoken direction that the platform was taking. And so my option was either like stop making shows, which is like almost impossible for me or like protect the main show, which is also the main breadwinner. And it's, it's my, it, it's my favorite show to make, uh, you know, and, and only do that or split and make one channel over there that does everything else or a more that, that the rest of the channel watched, you know, like everyone watches this show and then, the rest of the channel watches some of these shows. So I tried to make that like, uh, like work. And, uh, and I, I think that I am, I am disappointed when informative or interesting videos don't perform as well, but I have given up on being disappointed that any show doesn't touch back issues. I wish the back issues performed better overall. Like I, I'm disappointed when the shows don't reach, more heights you know like when i you know i look at a number that back issues will hit and i'll go that's what it normally hits but i wish that the normal were higher every year you know mm -hmm. um so that's the mo that's where the disappointment lies in me now where i'm like you know we're sustaining but i wish we could grow exponentially but i'm also annoyed whenever i hear like corporate america go well we need to have unprecedented growth every year and i'm like that's unsustainable and i mm. guess theoretically speaking it's better to just do well every year but i'd like to be doing better uh but uh i've i am disappointed that the audience is not overall as excited about creator interview interviews as i am um but at the end of the day i really don't care <laughs> like if, if it they makes don't better we love yeah. them oh thank like, you thank you your well, tom king some ones have been amazing them. like i Thanks. i love watching your tom king interviews um, I'm trying to get him back. Uh, and when I try to say trying, I mean, I, I just really need to to tell him what day we're going to do it and then we'll do it. Oh, wow. OK. The, like, the closest we've come to getting interviewed by him is when he calls me a nerd on Twitter. Oh, that's yeah. always and it's such a just a badge of honor. It feels good. Yes. Doesn't it? <laughs> but yeah, no. So that's uh, but CPR did help with that. Uh, thank you, Bunkmaster. <laughs> Which did you read Bunkmaster's comment right afterwards? Oh, uh, that's really funny. Join the Scouts. It's an activity less nerdy. Oh, yeah. Well, I would never yeah. reach Eagle. A, a, I would never have reached Eagle. I was a crappy scout. Uh, <laughs> B, I, I didn't get past the Weeblos. And once I heard the name, I was like, this sucks. I need to stop. 
Um, and and that's the thing. Like all, everyone in my class when I was a, in middle school, grade school, was in the Cub Scouts. So hmm. oh, if okay. I wasn't, I was. It was just kind yeah, of you're the odd one out. Well, everyone's yeah. doing stuff like on the weekends, and I'm just by myself <laughs> in the woods. And, uh, you know, just playing in the woods. That's what I did. And as a kid, I was like Calvin. I just go out in the woods and just play by myself. And I'm like, all right, I guess one of these days I'll, I'll make a friend out here. And did you have but, your hobs uh, with you as well? This hobs is actually uh, a, 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 a bootleg created by a friend of mine. She made it on the bus going to work every day. And uh, it represents, of course, like our mutual interest in Calvin Hobbes, but also my uh, my affinity for bill waterson's uh you know seminal creation but no i didn't have a hobbs when i was a kid i just had i just had action figures and stuff <laughs> hey, that's awesome though <laughs> yeah how what does collecting look like for you like is there a specific format you collect more of uh not really i don't i don't collect comics i never really did like i i bought comics you know uh I, and i only bought what i wanted and sometimes i was very selective in what i bought to its to the story's detriment where i would go well i'm not gonna you know i'm not interested in this in part six of eight so i'm just not gonna read it you know i i i'm the worst kind of fan <laughs> where i would just not focus on what was popular or or what might increase in value or or even what might look good on the shelf you know, i just bought comics because i just i liked reading them and uh you know <clears throat> and and I didn't like collectors uh, that I was around. Uh, that actually had a lot to do probably with my comic book retailer. When I was a kid, I had one guy who sold me comic books from like the beginning until he quit. And he hated the industry and he hated comic books and he hated the, the audience. Oh, yeah, I know. And it was like one day he realized he, he was crunching the numbers. It was it was the uh, early days of uh, online retail. And he found out like one day it hit a number where he was selling his books online and in the store and he made exactly as much online as he did in the store. And he's like, then I don't need the store anymore. <laughs> oh. like, Hooray. <laughs> he's like, great. I don't need this anymore. Bye. And like two weeks later, he closed the store. The store has been open for 30 years. And he's like, that's the end of that. And, uh, and, uh, and I was like, so that's the guy who influenced me on comic. Like I would be like, Oh, I'd ask him questions about like, you know, really like, burgeoningly nerdy questions that would lead me on a path towards like hardcore collection. And he'd go, you don't want to know. Or he'd be like, don't do that. Like, I remember he, he showed me a picture once of himself with Linda Blair and he's like, Hey, have you ever seen the exorcist? And I'm like, I'm nine. <laughs> and, uh, and he's like, well, she's an actor in this really great movie. And I'm like, Oh, that's cool. Where was she? Like at the ice cream store. And he's like, no, she's at like a place you go to meet celebrities. And I'm like, like Hollywood. And he's like, no. And he go, and I go, well, what is that? And he goes, you know what? You, you, you would, you shouldn't go to those things. Wow. Yeah. He just like gate kept me from all this like bigger world stuff. And so by the time, like I had a peer who bought nothing but like uh Bowen busts and he had like 11 busts and then like 30 busts. And I go, what are you doing with all these? And he didn't understand the question. He was just like, well, I need more of them. And I'm like, but why? And so that's really like that gets in my craw a lot when I buy stuff, you know, like I'll buy books for the show. I'll buy like trade paperbacks that I want to read. But I don't think about like the collector aspect of it. Um, occasionally I will get something signed, you know, because I love the thing and I want the creator to like pers to personalize it in some way. Um, that's the closest thing that I get to collecting at this point. I don't really even think about it, but, uh, you know, occasionally I bought like an action figure or a statue that I think is really awesome. It's, it's so rare that it even happens, especially now that I like, you know, I'm like, I don't have room for half this stuff. And then I got my studio, which is awesome. And I'm not there right now, but like in my studio, I have room for all this stuff, but I know I wouldn't for long if I like completely and fully embrace that hobby. Yeah. <laughs> I would just lose it. You know, like I, I have these, uh, you know, I got like tchotchkes, as you can see, like some toys that mean something to me. But again, it's like there's no rhyme or reason to any of them. You know, like I got like little Shop of Horrors Funko Pops because they look the closest to the props from the movie. <laughs> and no one else would ever make a little Shop of Horror from Frank Oz like prop or toy. So that's that's like that's the kind of thing I get. And it's it, yeah, but it's all very eclectic and all over the place. I wish I was more like you, man. I hate being a collector sometimes. Like, <laughs> like I took a I took a break because I mean, we I think you mentioned one of your I forget which interview it was that sometimes you know you take a break from comics and you can come back and you feel refreshed and rejuvenated. Yeah. And during that time, 
um, my, my girlfriend mentioned that she really liked lounge fly backpacks. Ooh. So I didn't realize what I was doing. I was like, Oh, I should buy her a lounge fly backpack. And then I just forced a lounge fly collection on her by buying her lounge fly backpacks. Then I realized I was like, wait, you did, you just, you didn't take a, you didn't save money. You didn't take a break from collecting things. You just forced a collection on someone who doesn't yeah. like collections. <laughs> she's like, I, she's like, I think I have enough backpacks now. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the number at Jake? Oh gosh, I have a photo. It's like she has a wall of the mountain now. <laughs> so, you know, I love it. I I, I jump from one collection. I, I took a break from comics and got really into Legos. Um, oh yeah. And I just so that was. But then what was cool is I didn't read some of the Legos. I didn't open some of the Legos, and then they went like they got out of stock or they retired, and I was able to make some money back for them and then buy nice. more comics. So yeah, you know, awesome. They, yeah, they fund That's each tough. other. Yeah, the Lego thing. I get it, but I'm like, oh couldn't i couldn't do that I, uh, so, the other thing is i'm like i want yeah. the thing that they make but yes. like i'd rather have the you thing. have to make it yeah but yeah. i gotta make it and then it just looks like a lego set of the thing that i want you know like like so, a lego set of the star destroyer <laughs> and i'm like that's cool but it's also just like it's a star destroyer that looks like a lego star destroyer if i'm gonna have like an eight foot star destroyer i'd rather have like one from the set or yeah. a scale model replica of a, a like a, of a screen accurate star destroyer like you know, if I want like uh, Deckard's gun from Blade Runner, I don't want a Lego version of it. I want a replicated yeah. prop of it. You know, I, I, and so I, I I get it, but I'm not I'm not a Lego kid. I was also really bad at them, so like that <laughs> that may have helped color my opinion about that a lot. So they what, come with instructions in the box. <laughs> what saved us? What 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 got me out of Legos was uh, I surprised my girlfriend with a cat for Christmas. Oh, nice. And you can't really do Legos and cats at the same time. Oh, yeah. They'll be like, meh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, that kind of got us out of that. So <laughs> nice. Yeah, plus, like, they take up so much room. That's my issue with Legos. I love Legos. I have no space for Legos. No. No, yeah. there's just no way. That's funny. Yeah. I'm not, and I, and, and I also fundamentally believe in them as like a, you know, fun, like creation kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to like make, cause I know once you make it, you're never going to want to take it apart. And you know, that's, that's too bad. <laughs> oh, um, we have, uh, we have Jess on here. Uh, Jess is a good friend of ours who has the YouTube channel Omni dog. Um, nice. But awesome. Thanks for watching. I am going to get you audio gear. I work <laughs> at a uh, high end audio store. So Ooh, like cool. we sell speakers from like a thousand to a hundred and thirty thousand. Like it's like that's <sighs> like, like I can't even imagine like people that spend like forty thousand on speaker cable. Yeah. Um, what, what do you mean? You can't even imagine you see yeah, it. You do it. You I sell mean, it. I sell, yeah. Yes. You're the yes. one that's doing the selling. But it's just yeah, it's 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 crazy. Yeah. Um, so the reason I'm not collecting cats is. After I collect enough comic books and my girlfriend starts to get mad at me, I have to be able to bribe her with a with a another cat someday. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, they're really addictive. It's it, you got to be careful with those with those things. They're because uh, they're really cute and you know, and they're they 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 they're deceptively easy, but they're not. You know, like they yes. take up a lot of time and effort. And if Catwoman's taught me one thing, it's hard to collect them all. So <laughs> Um, I'm not spending 100k on audio equipment. <laughs> <laughs> but if you wanted to, you got your perfect person right over there. You got a hookup, you know. Yeah, yeah. the uh, <laughs> the the markup in audio is crazy, man. Like it's it's wild. Oh, that. Yeah. No, I know. We we've we had to upgrade big time uh, at the studio. Again, I'm using my like Yeti microphone, which is nothing compared to like a nice audio setup but uh, yeah but but at least it's something as opposed to nothing you know you gotta and you know as well as i do like the lesson of like making a successful podcast youtube channel anything is they is to have good audio and that's the most important thing wait it is why don't we do that then <laughs> now actually that brings up sounds good two, two questions that i've had for you for quite a while sal all right uh, no number one uh audio how do you what are you using to pick up audio in that studio for all three of you guys? Oh, we have a, oh God. Uh, there's like a mixer that's like this big that you can get that plugs into lav mics and then they just tape the lav mics to your chest. Oh, wow. Okay. I yeah. can't even notice them most of the time when you guys are wearing labs. That's yeah. We're well trying. Yeah. They used to be clipped and then we, we'd, we'd run the wire up our shirts and then clip them here. Mm. And then eventually I learned that um, you could, 
like tape that you could create like little tape pockets for your lav, take off the palm, and then you could stick it like on your chest or your shirt, mm -hmm. and it'll pick it up just like it's here or here or in front of your face. And okay. uh, so that's what we use for back issues right now is just uh just lav mics hooked up to a to a mixer. Cool. I uh I showed my girlfriend an, an episode of Back Issues because I was trying to, like I was really excited you were gonna be on the show and I was like trying to show her what your show was like. Yeah. So I showed her the uh it was either death metal or 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 metal. And um I guess like one of you were holding the comic book and then your you know Ethan and Ben were were just right there and not holding anything. Yeah. And she was like, That's so mean that he doesn't let them hold anything. They look awkward with nothing <laughs> in their hands. <laughs> no, they'll she take what like, they want. Like that if they want like, it, they'll them, take it tell, tell them to let them, them hold stuff. So yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll take that under advisement. Yeah. So question, I'll give them more props. <laughs> question number two. Uh, like I said, I've been watching back issues for a very long time. Um, yes. I'm more of a visual, so like I'll put you on the TV versus listening to it. Nice. Um, what's with the camera shakes every so often in your back issues episodes? Like, I don't what, know. what's hitting that camera? That's because I Nothing. see the green screen moving like in the yeah, back it's... because of the camera shake. I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, it's just it does this thing. It's not even like, autofocus. It's just a, a weird thing that I was like, is Tiffany bumping the camera? Or do you no, no one's running studio? it. Studio, like what's no, this, we what's set happening? it up. Like we set up the camera on a tripod and just shoot it at the wall, and uh, it does this thing. It could be because of the green screen. It like just mm. the the ultra key effect. It could be the um, just the camera itself. Like uh, it's an older camera now, and so like it is on its way out. So we're gonna have to replace that at some point, which is not an insignificant expense. Gotcha. um yeah but uh yeah i don't know it's a question that's plagued me for at least the last couple of years uh okay. every once in a while i'll notice it and, and i try to like cover it up but you know it's it's tough it's it's weird yeah, and like, uh and, and it's selective like it'll just be a random little like two second moment where it'll like it'll mm -hmm. just kind of like shake and i, I don't know what it is yeah. it's really I, weird like, and honestly, I'm not trying to be nitpicky. I'm just no, I've no, always no, been just, curious. No. Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea what the hell the, the, the problem is. I'm, it's, this it's was the whole reason crazy. he wanted you on the show. He was like, I have I have critiques. Yeah, what so, is only, it? What is happening? Yeah, it haunts I, me. I wish I knew. <laughs> like, I would love to know because it's it, it drives me crazy, too. <laughs> was uh, the whoopee cushion bit at the beginning of your Marvel episode? Was that real? Like, because I, I, don't, I don't remember seeing that uh, that episode. Or was that just? No, we shot it in the same day. I don't know. Okay. It was, uh, just, <laughs> I had this. I had this funny idea. Maybe it was funny. I guess I was, you know, kind of, you know, telling it my, tell, calling it that funny myself. But like, I had this idea of, uh, you know, doing Marvel, and I thought it'd be funny if it was like a, like a punishment. It, it was a punishment. Yeah, because it is. I mean, like, it is really. Uh, and so, I was like, well, if it's a punishment, what's the what's the crime? And I thought the crime would be really funny if it was really innocuous, like something that just has no warrant for being that ornate but you took it way too seriously exactly so i thought like well you know what's a great prank from 1922 uh you know just <laughs> something that's really silly and a whoopee cushion came to mind and i i procured one from a local store at the mall that had whoopee cushions and you know and, and uh and then we shot like uh we just changed shirts and then filmed like a year ago. And mm -hmm. of course we thought it'd be funny to reference a book that we have never done and won't do anytime in the near future uh, that people may have asked for. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I'd done, I I'd done teases like that before we did a 52 reference and I did a Watchmen reference a few years ago. So, uh, you know, that's kind of like a little inside joke for us as well as like referencing doing like, if we do sketches or movies, like we'll, we, we will make a joke like instead of doing the episode everyone's always asked us to do we did this and that makes like, me think of community I, I i feel like that's what they would do they'd be like let's do a clip show of episodes that didn't happen yeah exactly yeah, yeah. it's it's very inspired by like the things that i think are funny you know like mystery science theater 3000 is very famous for doing love it like just just bits that are like funny to two people and mm -hmm. uh so that's i mean that's that's very much like inspired by that like that that's where that that came from but i was like yeah no we didn't shoot that a year ago if, if you look closely you'll see ethan has the exact same stubble uh, <laughs> you know what what would be a bigger punishment a uh, marvel back issues or a dark knight strikes again we, I mean, we did Dark Knight Strikes again. That's like episode three on our channel. Yeah. And and I plan on doing it again, uh, hopefully this year. But uh, so I think Marvel, because I would never do it again. I would never consider <laughs> like, touching it. I, I don't, I don't want to do, you know, I, I was very happy with Marvel uh, as it came out. And but with Dark Knight Strikes again, like we, we we didn't even really know what the show was. I mean, like 
it's it's essentially the same show, but like we do a lot more like in depth <coughs> discussions, and and there's a lot more I know about Strikes Again now than I did back then, and I'd love to revisit that. So that's so it's that's an easy question for me. I'll, uh, there's an easy answer anyway for me. It's Marvel is worse. I would much rather talk about um, Strikes Again and Will. <laughs> So Jordan, Jordan got me with that because, uh, he let me borrow his absolute dark Knight returns and I had never really read it. Nice. Um, and I read it and I loved it and I thought it was amazing. I was like, this is so much better than the animated movie. I was like, but there's yeah. still like half the book left. Like what, what is it? And he oh. was like, Oh, he was like, go for it, man. You're going to love it. Keep yeah. reading. <laughs> <laughs> now that's amazing. Uh, no, I do have a question for you, Sal. Cause you brought mm-hmm. up MST three K, uh, favorite movie. Like in general, like for from, me from any of their lineup oh from them oh the uh, like yeah. a, a movie they did uh yeah. you know, i was just talking i was just watching it today um the deadly mantis was a mo- was the first episode i ever saw and that pulled me into the show um in a big way uh i think jack frost is one of my favorite episodes that's easily it's a russo finnish co-production uh that uh is it, 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 it's it's a it's a famous bowl of like of, of of fairy tales you vaguely recognize uh, made by the russians and the finnish <laughs> like it, it's 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 really fun to watch um touch of satan is another one that i really enjoy touch of satan phenomenal it's what i'll probably say one of my top five uh yeah. number one for me is uh boggy creek two and the legend continues yep i uh, i i that one i haven't seen it nearly as often I rec- I like it because it has my crow in it. Bill Corbett's my favorite crow, uh, mm-hmm. so that's how I like kind of judge what I'm going to watch if mm-hmm. I go back and watch it. Um, there are very few uh, Trace Bellew uh, episodes that I will be like, "All right, let's watch the whole thing." Yeah, um, and fewer Joels. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me see. What I of think uh, the new another... DC movie lineup are you looking forward to? Oh man, Supergirl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I because I know what it is like the rest of them. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know, Damien, good luck. Uh, Superman Legacy, whatever that means. Uh, you know, Booster Gold, I hope it works out. But Supergirl Woman Tomorrow is like a masterpiece. So, yeah. And and Tom King's like great involved. episode, by the way, of that one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was Tiffany's episode. But I'm very proud of it because, uh, you know, she always does way more research than I do. And uh, and I think we sold a few copies as a result of that, which I'm very proud of. But uh, yeah, Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow is uh, such a good book, and it's a, and, and Tom works for DC now, like DC Films. So I'm hopeful that it's an adaptation that is just like yeah. we took this comic, we we sculpted it into this movie, but it's essentially the movie, uh, or it's essentially the book. Um, and if they do that, it's going to be know, a really cool movie. It'll be a really cool movie. That's right. How about you guys? I think I'm excited to finally see some bat family in, in the movies. Yeah. Pretty dope. Yeah. Um, that one is probably, I mean, going to be one of my, one of my favorites uh, would probably probably be the Batman one. Supergirl. Oh, sorry. Super. Uh, yeah. Supergirl. Uh, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, Green Lantern. It sounds kind of like they're doing like, is like the earth three thing with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So that, that should be interesting. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I feel like all of them are going to be fantastic. You know, I'm just like, I, I feel like for so long I've been telling people like, no, now DC movies are finally going to start being good, you know? So <laughs> I, yeah. I can vouch. She's been telling me that for years and I still, <sighs> I, we got to get a, a, a hardcover version of Supergirl woman of tomorrow though. Like, I feel I like it would make an amazing absolute or like even just a standard size hardcover. Like, um, yeah, I would love to see a, an absolute edition of that book, but like we, we didn't even get a damn hardcover. So I, I, I think that, the fact that the book like technically sold out uh, because they didn't like make enough copies in the first place, but I'm, I'm hopeful that like just the buzz forces them to make an oversized or at the very least like a hard bound edition. Like, like the strange adventures hardcover is gorgeous and really, really terrific. And uh, I wish that we could. uh, Yeah. And I I would love to see a Supergirl version of that. Right. Like the dust jacket is great. Underneath the dust jacket is just as gorgeous. And I love when they do that. Like when they put, you know, when they put effort into them and uh, Rorschach, same deal. Like all the Tom King books. That's what's so frustrating. He's it's like, there's he, a heroes in crisis hardcover, but no Supergirl. He has my two dream absolutes. Um, I want up in the sky and woman of tomorrow. 
Yeah, up in the sky, I have a hardcover of, and that's such a good one. I uh, I got a lot. I I my ex stole that from me when I moved out. Uh, my hardcover. So then I bought a couple trades of it and but then i gave them away to friends um who were like watching the podcast i was like hey i think this is an amazing superman story it's like the quintessential superman story yeah. and then it's out of out of stock now so i'm like dang i gotta wait for it to be oh, I didn't back know in print out of stock oh my god no. i like i like texted my friends i was like hey man if you ever not wanting that comic book i gave you <laughs> i could take it back because it's like 50 dollars for the trade right now <sighs> Wow, that's that's a sin because like it shouldn't be right. Like they printed a bazillion copies of that book. Like there's, yeah, it should be out. Actually, no, thanks for reminding me. I think I saw it at my local comic book shop for Ooh. a hardcover. Well, it was my it. birthday a week or two ago, Jordan. Well, you didn't <laughs> tell me you needed the hardcover still. I thought you got it again. He bought me a Howard the Duck masterwork for my birthday. That's cool. Heck yeah! I'm getting you another one. It just it comes out later <laughs> this year. Hey, pre-orders. I was gonna text you, but it seemed like like uh, not cool. But I was like, hey, uh, Captain America pre-orders are, are live right now. Oh, uh, oh I have the first three of the right? brew, the brew, yeah the brew baker ones. So I need to get nice. four and five. Cool. Well, five is your birthday gift. It's just I still happen to throw in Howard the Duck, <laughs> everyone's favorite. Yeah. Now, now I I do have I don't I don't know how much time we have with you, Sal, but uh, yeah, we have a little bit of time left, I think, right? I do have a comic recommendation for you to do for back issues or more for Tiffany to do. Oh, great. Um, I'm hoping maybe when it comes out, cause it comes out later this year that Tiffany can do Jurassic league <laughs> by, by Daniel Warren Johnson. Yeah. I would love to see Tiffany talk about that uh, because I think that Ethan would love it. And uh, I, you know, I, I didn't really respond to it. And it's not one of those things where I was like, this is the worst thing in the world. It was just kind of like one of those things where I'm like, I see what you're doing. It's not yeah. for me. Uh, and, and that's, you know, there's no reason for me to cover a book where I'm like, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it would be, there has to be a reason for me to do a book where I'm like, it's, it's fine. Um, yeah. But, but Tiffany would might, might do a way better job. I mean, there's a, I have a, I have a short list of books where I'm like, Tiffany, <laughs> you need to do these books. Um, I bought them for you, you know, go, go do them. She's like, it's a lot of work for me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot better i'm a lot of i'm a much better student than you are so she has like <laughs> annotations and notes and does all this research like she's yeah yeah i've i've watched your sandman episode yeah. um she put a lot into that episode right and, and it's and you can I, see it you can tell like she yeah. does an Thank amazing you. job right no her, her episodes are always way her batman damned both sandman's uh supergirl like i said like mr miracle she did uh you know there's so many good ones uh and i would love to see her do like um you know what was it uh, i really wanted to do one of the like midnight suns stories Ooh. the older ones um uh, uh. any story I'd like to cover but the audience just isn't there for it yeah i mean there's tons of those i mean like i would love to one day do the first volume of savage dragon or uh or wildcats you know um just just for fun but i think they'd be like I mean, Batman Max was was a was a a dud, so to speak. It eventually, they all eventually catch up. But mm. but um, one of the little known secrets about like YouTubing is like if the video do, like underperforms within the first day yeah. or the first couple of hours of its release, then it's you get like the video gets diminished and you and you are put into lower bracket. So I'm like, that's why I always like lament. I'm like, well, the episode didn't do great, you know, because like I, I need it to do at least well enough than the, as, as well, if not better than the last one or else YouTube goes like, well, uh, it doesn't look very good for you. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, what have been some of your favorite interviews that you've done? So many, man. Uh, I'm so lucky to have. I, I'm so lucky to have gotten the ear of like a ton of different people. Uh, you know, it, it's funny. I I I was gonna say Daniel Warren Johnson, but Tiffany did that interview, but I've met him a couple times, so I've actually had a chance to chat with him in person, and he's just as lovely and sweet as you'd imagine. Um, but uh, you know, talking to Tom on a regular basis, Josh Williamson on a regular basis. Those guys. I loved just... your, your recent episode. Cause I, I had just watched your back issues and yeah. I was like, Oh, he was probably deep into Marvel because that came up in your, your episode. I was, I was doing research on Marvel. And so I was like, well, this reminds me of Marvel because I'm literally researching it right now. <laughs> He's like, okay. Uh, but it was a fun, it, it was fun for him to mention it because Josh was working in a comic book store when that was happening. So like yeah. he had a unique insight as well. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very proud of having had, uh, having had 
Uh, I had JMD Mateus on twice, and he's super dope uh, and incredible. Um, we've had Scott Snyder on. He's amazing. Uh, I mean, there, there, there's I've never had a creator on that I'm like, well, that was a waste of my time. Or like, oh, what a disappointment. <laughs> you know, like uh, I had Garth Ennis on, and he was like hilariously tight-lipped, but... It was, but I, but I still got to talk to Garth Ennis for like 45 minutes. That was really, really like, that was a feather in my cap as well. Um, but yeah, as far as favorites, I mean like the ones you see the most, you know what I mean? Like the ones that I try to get the most of uh, because there's like a rapport, because there's like a, it, it, in some way, like a friendship, you know what I mean? Like particularly like Tom and, and, and Josh are some of my favorites to talk, to, like to talk to on a regular basis. But um, you know, it, it's, how many live streams do we need to do before we're considered friends? Oh, I don't know, man. That's, you know, that's the thing, right? Like we'd have to, you know, probably more than if we met in person, you know what I mean? Like, because uh, meeting in person, it makes a big difference uh, for, the, for that kind of thing. So I have to fly to New Jersey, yep. then we can. It doesn't have to hey, be, uh, you know, I don't, you don't have to come to me. Maybe I'll be in your neighborhood. You never know. If it makes um, you feel better, my fake ID in high school was from New Jersey. Oh, nice. <laughs> that's because that's because New Jersey has really crappy uh, uh, driver's licenses. And so it's they're easy to replicate. They're easy to make fakes of. Uh, so that's that's a little tip for all you kids out there who are looking to drink. Uh, <laughs> without, uh, oh, uh, we had Todd McFarlane on, which was awesome uh a number of times uh which i was like you know and, and todd remembered me and i was like hey uh <laughs> and uh oh i have jim zub on every once in a while who's super sweet and cool uh and i've had jack packard from red letter media on twice and he is super dope like he is such a pro and so fun to talk to um I, I noticed um what was it comic tropes a peer of ours uh said do it was do it is fun who gives a crap about views i'll tell you i mean it's part of your livelihood though you know you got to be careful uh, bingo you know like yeah. i i agree and i and listen uh you know as you know uh talking directly to chris but like as you know you know like there's an old adage you know you do one for them one for me or mm -hmm. two for them one for me that kind of yeah. thing and so sometimes I will roll the dice on episodes that I really am like, I really want to do this, but I can play more over on returns than I can on uh, prime because it's totally got 20,000 subs and it only accounts for a third of my revenue, <laughs> but I also do this for a living and I, I want to keep doing it for a living. <laughs> so, you know, I make compromises where I can, but the thing is I never do something that I'm like, darn, I have to do this lest I, you know, lose my shirt. <coughs> you know, like, the, 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 people ask us to do uh, more Invincible. I don't want to do more Invincible. So we don't, you know? Uh, so that's, you know, uh, I, I just, I pick and choose, but I also go, like, sometimes I just want to do something else. And so I do, <laughs> you know? And that's the that's the benefit. Sometimes you got to remind, like, yourself, like, you're the boss. You tell them yeah. what to do. Um, oh, somebody mentioned Jason Aaron. We did have Jason Aaron. He was super great. Um, yeah, he did not enjoy being interviewed. No, he he was he was. I, I haven't watched it. I don't like to rewatch my. I don't. I don't want rewatch those. But um, I haven't rewatched it. But I don't remember it being difficult. I remember him being cool. But now that I'm thinking about it, he was he was not as easy going as some others. You know. And uh, he and, and he never came back. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I'm excited to read his Thor run. I have the first one, and the the second one is coming out later this year. Good stuff. His Punisher book's pretty great. Pretty great. That's what I wanted to talk to him about. I was like, "You want to talk about Punisher? I love Punisher." Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right that's fair enough i i've been very vocal about your avengers run so i understand if you don't want to talk to me no talking about comic books that uh some creators don't want to talk about yeah um you yourself are a comic book creator in my own way yeah it's true i i've made i've dabbled uh as i've mentioned i i you know i've made my own movie which no one will ever see hopefully and i've <laughs> i've made my own comic books which i've made readily available so if you know but thankfully no one has pursued them so it's worked out uh you know to my benefit no that, here's the uh, thing i i have been trying to pursue them <laughs> i can't find them anywhere we tried yeah. to do research for this i <laughs> i appreciate it so 
what do I got to do to get like a, a PDF or a CBR of that? Well, because like I, I can't find it anywhere. Jordan yeah, has no. PayPal, Venmo. He'll... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would never charge anymore. But, uh, you know, we uh, I have a book. It's It was worked. Uh, I, I was paired up with uh, uh, Victor Bogdanovic uh, to make a book called Garth Kirby and the Cookbook of the Gods. Yes. That was something that I was like, this is this is, this is fire. This is going to blow up. No, but uh, it was a lot of fun. I'm really proud of it. I'm very glad we got, we got a chance to make it. And that uh, was uh, up on Comixology for the longest time through their Comixology submit program. So for a while, it was on Comixology. And if you Google it, maybe it'll still come up, <clears throat> but probably not. Mm-hmm. I, I certainly haven't looked for it, uh, but yeah, it used to be on Comixology. And uh, so that was one way. I have another series uh, called Flight of the Binturong, which was like by Space Adventure webcomic. That was back when webcomics, back when I thought we could still do webcomics, but I hadn't realized that webcomics had been dead for almost a decade. (laughs) Uh, But uh, someday you probably will be able to uh, pick up Flight of the Binturong because uh, Tiffany had this printed as like a book and like had it actually like she designed it and produced like all the like interiors. Like she produced like the, 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 like the graphics and the lettering and uh, the formatting and everything. And so we're working out the, uh, the, the kinks, make sure that this whole thing is, uh, is all good to go, but eventually we'll do a Kickstarter and get this book out there. And then that will be, uh, that'll be the time to read something I've read. Or you could just go to flight of the and just read it there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh we like physical comics here exactly no but it's, I, yeah. and, it, and there's something to be said for like having something you've made in your hand that's got to be so cool to hold it though man like it was it was i mean it is right now but it was when i first got it too when she she gave it to me i was like this is you know brought me to tears it was incredible i i do some digital reading because like i i try to like digitally read current stuff and then i'll you know rebuy it physically when it yes. comes out um so the most recent that i read is i read superman number one today Nice. Um, which was the most recent DC I've read since Dark Crisis ended. Um, okay, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, dark, yeah. So, um I thought Superman was really like really good. Um Same. like it made me excited about what's going to come, you know. It seemed like a good status quo. Yes. Yeah, Josh gets the character and and you can tell like what he's going for, what inspired him. And uh so that's it's incredible. Uh I I really like that series. Plus Jamal Campbell's art. It's freaking dope. Um and I'm loving uh, Zdarsky's Batman. That that's that's doing something for me. Um, You've been reading that, right, right, Jordan? Yeah, uh, that's another thing I wanted to ask. You eventually, was uh, your current <coughs> thoughts on Zdarsky? Because uh, yeah, he's he's having a very interesting take on this alternative universe or a uh, different yeah. world for uh, Bruce to be in. Mm-hmm. Um, what well, my favorite moment, and Jake brought it up on one of our previous podcasts, is when. Uh, Bruce or Batman survives his fall down from uh from the moon, from the moon. or from yeah. space. Yeah. 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 Dude, it was badass. I think <laughs> so too. Watching. Like and it's funny, like Chip has been one of those people and I'm I'm so thankful for it. He's talked about this before like and and it actually in an upcoming issue of Batman he he mentions this um like in the narrative. But like you know cynical critical opponents of batman as a character usually go like you know he's really selfish and he's really crazy why does he just give all of his money to the police department and stuff and i'm like and chip's like because it would be really boring they should make a book where someone gets hundred million dollars in a bag of cash you know and then right. they could just give out the money right that, that'd be <laughs> Maybe, a good idea right it, it, only if they do it two or three times and yeah. then meet god <laughs> then it would be really then it would it, there's no way it could lose yeah um but yeah um, it, but his his point was like valid and he i think he did a comic about it like i think if you check into Substack, like he he drew like an actual comic strip which was like the most boring comic book ever <laughs> and it's just like if bruce wayne had not become batman and yeah he's not wrong um yeah it's really cool i a, nice i think you can read it on i read it on dc universe um so mm-hmm. if you're looking for a place to read it it's on there um yeah because i'm still holding out for that that hardcover Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The um, what was it? Uh, Smokey mentioned that uh, Woman of Tomorrow may have been poached up by scalpers. That's very true. If you check out their eBay, um, thankfully, they, they were not successful because there were a lot of copies of Super Woman of Tomorrow in singles. And they're mm-hmm. still in dollar bins. <laughs> but I did see it like, you know, first issue for like twenty five dollars, thirty dollars. And I'm like, 
Okay. And no. I mean, I think we can all agree because uh, DC's not just gonna let Woman of Tomorrow slip up as like another avenue. No. To try to pick up extra dollars. Yep. So definitely, there's gonna be like a Woman of Tomorrow a reprint of the floppy. Obviously, oh. there's probably gonna be a hardcover. I expect them to have a deluxe edition. I hope so, man. I hope yeah. so. It's tough. Like, there's no, there's been no announcement. Been, yeah, they've been, they've been surprisingly quiet about it. It, I mean, well, the whole collected editions department at DC. I mean, I feel like they're finally starting to announce things with uh, the Green Lantern Corps omnibus and a couple of absolute reprints. But for like, and that's what kind of got me into finally collecting Marvel comics. I mean, if you look at my big bookshelf right over, that's all DC, and then my smaller one is like the Marvels from this year. Nice. But like, I just I didn't want to go a year without buying a book. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, you don't want to go a year without buying a book, so you bought twenty. <laughs> Yes, I, I have a problem. <laughs> I have a problem, dude. Yeah, I have the problem, man. I, I, I um, there's a comic shop in, not really in my neck of the woods, but it's in essentially my general vicinity, and uh, I go there like, I don't know, two or three times, like, like twice a month, two or three times a month. Yeah, no, um, yeah, at least three times a month, and they have like a fifty percent off trades section where there's like ten long boxes full of trades, and they're all half off. And I never leave without spending 50 or $60. And I need to stop that because I, while I do have a library, it's getting pretty crowded in there. If I remember correctly, I think I saw that you have a room dedicated to only singles floppies. Right? We have, well, uh, you have a little Batman section, right? And then do, you have your whole... other non Batman section. Yeah. We have a, uh, we have a library that is uh, encircled by, by long boxes. Mm, and those okay. long boxes have all of our singles in them. And then in t inside of it are these Kellex uh, bookshelves from uh, Ikea that are thick enough where you can double stack them. You can have them from both sides. And so I have double stacked uh, over, over, over 2,050 trades and hardcovers. And, it's, and I have probably a couple hundred trades in a pile. <laughs> in another room next to it because I don't, because they're all alph alphabetized and I don't want to move them all again. <laughs> I need an intern or something. <laughs> that has always me. been my question for uh, people that have ginormous collections. How much does it suck when you buy one new book and you got to fit it well, right in line? I tried, I tried to like leave room, you know, every, every cube. I'm like, well, I'll leave like this much space. That's why like I have two or three new trades. sideways. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I need to do that. I need to fix that. <laughs> it's a real, it's be, it's becoming an issue. So, so you yeah. can hire me. Just book my flight. Right. Oh yeah, solid. that'll be way, yeah that'll be yeah. way cheaper than me just doing it myself. No, no, taking of course. an hour to do it. I, yeah, but that's the benefit is you don't have to do it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, no, and, and you know sometimes you don't want to mow the lawn. Sometimes yeah. <laughs> I just want to pay the kid across the street to do it for you. And hey, it's so. just a business expense. So uh... that's true. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the, the thing about writing things off is you still have to pay. You. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that uh, Shit's Creek video clip, if you guys have seen it, where he's like, it's a write-off. He's like, who's writing it off? And yeah. He's buying things for his business, and he says it's a write-off. Yeah. I mean, he's not wrong. It is a write-off. He, he, he didn't realize that he someone he had to pay, pay for, for it. Still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ugh. That's awesome. Has there that's ever been an episode that, or something that you've shot that like you weren't happy with, so you never posted it? Um, I don't think so. There's no, there's never been a back issues that has been finished besides the onslaught episode that we shot and didn't have any like audio for or, or any video for, but, uh, there's never been an episode that I was like, this sucks. <laughs> I just, I just canned it. Um, there, there may have been like podcasts we've done where I was like, I don't really like that, but, uh, they're usually like weekly one off topical kind of things. And even then, Probably not. I mean, if I go back into my archive, I know there are videos that like, like unboxing videos, like older videos that were like very YouTube, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. these bucket challenge videos where I'm like, these don't need to exist anymore. <laughs> and so I just unlist them or I delete them. And, uh, you know, they're just older videos that that were me trying to play the YouTube game. Like, OK, well, uh, you know, we're still growing and we're not doing very well. But uh, maybe the problem is I'm not doing something that is definitely not in our wheelhouse that everyone else is doing. So I'll be lost in the shuffle, but because we're doing it, we'll be noticed. Like those, those are garbage, but uh, you know, any, anything re re about comics uh, that isn't like sponsored, 
nah, no, no, that's all out there. Mm-hmm. No, I, I think you did. Uh, you kind of answered it yourself without even me having to ask the question. But <laughs> uh, some of your original back issues episodes, um, where they're shot either I think they're shot at your household originally, yep. and then eventually into the comic shop, and then now you have your own studio. Yeah. Um, have you ever really reconsidered a about redoing some of your issues or your oh yeah episodes, oh like yeah yeah and i think we've we've been work- oh what was your example uh yeah you you already got it it was uh dark knight strikes again oh dark knight strikes again yes yeah uh oh yeah 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 i've i've considered doing not all of them you know like i know but we did um i don't remember if we did it uh, spider-man gen 13 was an issue was an episode we did that did uh, so horribly I was like, and if you look at like, I think Gen 13 is our like second episode. And I think it has the same amount of views as like a new episode released two days ago. Mm -hmm. So like for me, Gen 13 will never be redone because it'll be, it'll do so horribly that it would hurt me to redo. Mm -hmm. Uh, Plus, I don't know if I have anything more to say on the subject, (laughs) You know, but I would love to, I mean, only, only for posterity. Like I'd like to have remade that episode only to be more robust and have more data and more like fun anecdotes, but there's something, there's something charming about how crappy those old videos are and how like you watch it grow, you know, like the closest thing I did to a redux more recently was like, uh, for our, like, I don't know, eight year anniversary or something. I recut the first episode with like better audio and more pictures and stuff. And it we got a George work. Lucas over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but there are episodes that I definitely plan on redoing for one reason or another, whether that's bad audio, more insight or a changed opinion. And uh, so, yes, I definitely want to do that. Um, that's awesome. And I, you know, and it's just a question of, there's also episodes where I'm like, well, we did this with a different cast. What if I do it with another cast? Like, what mm-hmm. if I, you know, like I, I, there's one episode that I did over at team comic story and where it's, it's a crew you'll never see again. And uh, not, for, not because I don't work with them anymore because like, we're just, we're not going to do that anymore. But uh, I would love to do that book with the team, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris asked me what, uh, how much space we have. I think it's, I think it's eighteen hundred square feet. I think I think last time I did the measurements, it was eighteen hundred square feet. Did you ever get that moth or that bug that was in your live stream a couple? We days did. Ago? It was a stink oh, bug. A stink bug. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we got him. Uh, I was gonna kill him, uh, just be, you know, because he's a bug. And Tiffany was like, "What are you doing? Like, don't don't kill him. At least try to get him out of here." So we <laughs> caught him and I got him out. So he he lives to stink another day. <laughs> Chris would be a fun guest. I think uh you know it's interesting. We've had uh we've had other experts on the show with me. Uh and I I'm, by the way, every expert I've had, every person I've had that that has been like, you know, that knows as much as me has always known more than me. <laughs> Jason Inman, Mike Zapsick, and it would be the same with Chris. Chris knows way more than I do. So it'd be very fun to be, be like, this is the thing that happens. And Chris would be like, that's not what happened at all. Actually, it's this. And it's like, oh, well, there we go. Oh, well, fuck me. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I guess, uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just get out of the way and let you do it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> here's my studio. It's yours now. Exactly. Yeah. Here's the keys. Good luck. You know, enjoy the guy who smokes weed next door. <laughs> <laughs> He's very gracious. He offers once a week exactly yeah. yeah oh no he does not no, oh, he does. oh he's stingy with that okay no yeah. he just he just smokes up outside or in he smokes up in like a covered garage that uh, we're we have like these these drop ceilings so we have like like five feet between the drop ceiling and the actual ceiling and no ventilation in between so there's no way he, like <laughs> it, it's just he's getting high in here and it just comes over comes into our studio which is why i have like four air vent or, or air purifiers going um I just realized I had a vent going that I turned on this morning that I need to turn off. Oh. <laughs> I was like, he's like, he's like, I gotta go now. Yeah, I was like, that's still on. I uh, should probably turn that off. Uh, <laughs> not right now, but I will when we're done. I'm gonna leave yeah. and go do that. Uh, <laughs> but thankfully, I'm not far from my studio, so I can just run over to into that. But yeah, it's mm, yeah. The reason being, I don't. Okay, so like, there's an area. That has become that has been many things. It used to be our streaming room. It used to be our like you know uh, high top two person room, uh, and now it's our uh, office where I keep my refer- the refrigerator and all of our like supplies, coffee and stuff. 
but it used to be before we moved in a makeshift dark room. And so it has red fluorescent bulbs in it and a vent that they built. So I don't know how, like, if, if that thing's going to burn out or cause a fire because yeah. it's been on for eight hours. I'm like, I don't know if that thing, because that was not up to code. Nothing in that building is up to code. <laughs> That's why I don't pay very much. Uh, so, you know, it's, it it's why like, we have a studio at all. Cause I'm like, that sounds like my apartment, not up right? to code, but we don't pay very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why, uh, that's why it works out. You know, you, you just, you, you weigh the pros and cons. Yeah. See what like, works. Who cares if the stairs are diagonal, you know, yeah, <laughs> I, get, well, I just you go turn slowly. Your head. Look, yeah. yes. Yeah, don't, don't just make sure the lights are on. My cat loves them. He, it's a fun game for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so what was it like having to interview writers when you've been, like somewhat critical of their work before was that like is that awkward or yeah. like do you make like an icebreaker <laughs> or what do you what do you do uh i try to talk to them before the show you know i try to like chat with them uh i've never I, i've never done it like usually they, they 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 reach out to me you know what i mean like they've reached out to me to say something uh usually it's not like yo um i'll kill you uh but it's usually like <laughs> like um you're like, hey, man, I saw your video. Uh, boy, you really rigged me over the coals on this one. <laughs> uh, and I'll be like, hey, man, like, listen, uh, you know, like, I, I, I hope you weren't offended. Like, I hope it wasn't. I try not to make it really personal. Like, I try, you know, if it's critical, uh, it's it's even handed in some way. It's fair. Mm -hmm. um, I try not to be like, this person is like, uh, is a demon made manifest on Earth who's ruining everything. Um, and if it were the case, I think it'd be hypocritical for me to, like, also invite them on the show. Unless my, my opinion's changed. You know, or or I've learned something new, and certainly that's happened. Um, but uh, but I try to talk to them before we do the show. Like, uh, what was it? The, the only time that didn't happen was with uh, was with Kyle Higgins, and that was on someone else's show where I was critical of a colleague of his, and he was waiting to do the next show, and he's like, and he's contacting them like, put me in the show right now, like with him, <laughs> and he and they did, and this is all on the internet. You can watch this video. And he's like, hey, man, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. And here's <laughs> why. And I'm like, fair enough, man. Like, you know what? I don't. But like, there's a veil sometimes yeah. in the industry. And all we have to go on is context clues and critical thinking. And so this is my opinion about that. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe uh, is it out of line to accuse uh, a prominent creator that's won Eisner's that they've littered an entire character's rogues gallery with original creations on the vain hope that maybe one of them will appear in a Gotham show and they'll get a higher residual. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but uh, I, I say yes. <laughs> and, uh, and he was like, well, no. And I'm like, well, fair. All right. Well, you would know, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was the only time that was like not prepared, you know, or not like, because if we had talked off mic, we mm -hmm. would do a show, you know, uh, and, and it would not be as like as confrontational or as awkward as it may have appeared when that happened. Okay. Uh, but I also welcome the like uh, that moment because I was like, no, you know what? Like, thank you for taking me to task and, and, and for setting the record straight, you know, mm -hmm. because like I don't mean to speak, you know, I, I speak hyperbolically, as you can imagine. And uh, I, I do that for dramatic effect and more or less because that's who I am. That's what I do. That's how I've been doing it. My mom's a lawyer and my dad's an actor. It's just and by the way, not like a like a screen actor he, he he's an insurance salesman <laughs> but uh oh. <laughs> but he also was a stage actor and he was ve and he does characters and voices and you know I'm, I'm very influenced by like a lot of different factors uh you know plus i'm also supported by assist by a complete system of reference filled bladders that makes me like just a just a regurgitation machine of pop culture <laughs> uh, so you know but you can imagine that anything that i say is going to be like crit critical or hyper hyperbolic it's going to be mm -hmm. exaggerated Mm -hmm. yeah. But not, but not to the point where I'm trying to obfuscate the truth or reality. It's just like you know, uh, if, if something sucks or I'm not really a big fan of it, then it's the worst thing ever. And you know, mm -hmm. it's like I try to exaggerate myself so that it's like not quite as you know, it's it's, it's a little more obvious that I'm not like to be taken seriously, you know, yeah. or that I'm that that uh, what I'm saying uh, take it take it with a grain of salt, mm -hmm. uh, unless I'm saying I mean like, and I'll do that where I'm do, we're doing a live show. I'm like I mean this. You know, and I do mean it. Like I mean, I stand by what I say, but I'm you also have to be honest with your truth. You know, if exactly. you have an opinion of something, right? And I am. But you and, also and, have to dramatize for you know, because you're an entertainer. Exactly, and I'm, but I'm not like, I'm not trying to dramatize for entertainment value. I just know that I appear dramatic because, yeah. like, 
one of the things that like if I can if I can give myself any kind of compliment, it's that like if you meet me in real life, this is it. It's not another version. You know, yeah. maybe I'll be like more tired and less talkative because of external factors, but this is me. And it's me on that show or this show or at the con or at the mall or at the Jiffy Lube. It's all me. Um, but uh, but I do welcome that opportunity. I did welcome that opportunity because I'm like, hey, thanks for like, you know, uh, re reaching, reaching my like, you know, meeting me at my level being like, no, I was like, that's <laughs> funny. But uh, but yeah, no, I mean, like the first time we had Scott Snyder on, I was like, hey, it was very much like Joker when he takes the mask off at Harvey Dent in the hospital. And he's like, hi. <laughs> that was because I was very critical of Snyder's run. And uh, and and he he's the one who actually emboldened me to reach out to creators that I may have been critical of in the past because he reached out to me and was like, hey, man, like what you said, like, you know, really hurt me. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was like, what you said was like was 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 tough, but fair, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, thank you. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not doing it to get your attention. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the way I saw it, I'm, I'm very much influenced by Wizard, who was very flip about their treatment of the comic book industry, and I was like, no one's watching anyway. Least of all them. And if they are, well, they are watching from their place of superiority. You know, like they're like, oh, look, an idiot on the Internet doesn't like my book. And he thinks that it's like, you know, the worst thing in the world. Who cares? Well, turns out some of them do. <laughs> and so I, I, I have actually taken that on and tried to soften a bit. You know, mm -hmm. certainly I, I'm, I'm less flippant in my language than I used to be. You watch those earlier episodes. I'll be like, this guy, su this guy sucks. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and he's bad in bed, you know, like, <laughs> but, and I know uh, from experience yeah. and I know yeah. it because, yeah, we went out a couple of times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't lie, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, but I am like much more uh, you know, extreme back then than I am now. Cause I'm like, Oh, look, it's a human being who doesn't want a two hour video <laughs> about how much their book sucks. Uh, so, you That's know, gotta be a really hard line to have to walk though, because like, I think one thing that you, like you are, I've always been from your old videos to now is like passionate about it yeah. and some, and, but also honest. So sometimes like, like, do you have to soften that critique because you might interview this person in a couple, in like a year or something like you might have to like, amp, you know, hear from it, you know, but yeah. you also don't want to like be afraid to be honest because right. people, people do respect. Mm -hmm. like I bought books because of your videos. Like a, one of them was yeah. like flashpoint beyond, like I loved your flashpoint beyond. It was dope. It gave me so much context that I wouldn't have known going in. I had no idea it, it was like a, a sequel to Doomsday Clock. I had, I there I didn't hear any marketing on it. It kind of passed me by because I wasn't collecting yeah. issues at the time. And like I, the context that you added, you know, was was very very integral to me enjoying that story. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of my one of the things we try to do with back issues, at least, is um, even if we're like this book sucks <laughs> on toast, like what I've done, I'm like this book sucks on toast. The only book we never did it on is Marvel. But what I did, what I do with any book that we cover, I'll put a link in the description for you to buy it because I'm like, if it's available, unless it's out of print, if it's not out of print, if it's out of print, I can't help you. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not going to put like a link to a $400 book on Amazon. That's not, that's and not it's fair. you, it's you selling it on eBay. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, it's never me. It's that, what I, I mean, I'm not an idiot. I, they are, they are Amazon affiliate links, you know? Yeah. So like, but I mm -hmm. get, but I get Amazon points out of it. I don't get money. I, I just use it to buy more comic books. Um, and it's so rare that it happens, but I do try to make it available only as much as I'm like, well, this book, if it's on Amazon, it'll probably be cheaper than if you get it anywhere else. Uh, but if we had a deal with like a comic book store or something like that, I would love to do that instead. Just to, because what I want to do is sell comic books. And it's not like that's what I secretly want to do with this channel. But like, I noticed like you, Jake, that people buy our books or don't buy our books based on what we say. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like really careful about it. To say like, listen, I didn't like it. That doesn't mean it shouldn't exist. And that doesn't mean that you won't enjoy it. So there's a copy. Like, get it, you know? But uh, if you like it, or if you like that idea, if it sounds good to you. Because I've had I've had episodes where we spent two hours being like, this book is the worst thing I've ever seen. And we've had comments that are like, just from the way you described it, it sounds kind of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, good thing there's a link in the description so you can go pick it up. Because uh, what else would I, would I do, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's... But but to get back to what you said, you know, I think I've never not been critical of anyone that I've had on the show. 
so yeah, it is awkward. <laughs> it's gotten less awkward, you know, when both parties realize we're dealing with human beings. You know, yeah. I'm like, you're 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 a person. You don't deserve to be treated like you're not, you know, a person or that you're some entity out there, you know. Um, so that's so yes, it has happened, but it happens a lot less now. And uh and I'm I I am and I don't I've never had anybody like say like i hate i hate those like no one from the industry i've had people fans say that every day but uh i have never had any industry professional go like i hate those guys so much because of what they do and i'm gonna get them like it's, it's i think that's how i know me and jordan will make have made it when we finally have enough fans that say they hate us <laughs> yes because they, <laughs> yeah. they'll care in some way but i don't i don't advocate creating content to be hated because i think that's disingenuous and toxic and it, it's corrosive but if people hate you and love you you've made it because it means I that mean, you have I, doesn't the algorithm view a liked video and a disliked video as, as engagement no matter so it doesn't even make a difference big time big time oh yeah no they don't care as long as people are clicking on it they're like yeah good all right but but i care so please don't dislike this video yeah well, you know, <laughs> i never even when they got rid of the dislike video the, when they got rid of the button I know it's over there, but I never see it anymore. So, you know, it's, it's in the, yeah. it's in the metrics, but I never looked at it uh, in the metrics. I only looked at it on the video and I'm like, and it's so rare that we'll get like a lot of them, you know? Mm, yeah. And not, Jake, not to toot my own horn or anything, but you know, <laughs> by, by the way, Jake, we will know we'll, we have made it. If, uh, if we get a comment saying, you guys have changed. I miss the the, the old Brave and the Boys. Yeah, <laughs> the original... right? I I wish they would shoot in their bait in their bedroom again. You know, like, yeah. Was, that Go was back to my real... back to my mom's house with no microphone. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the one rule I had for myself because I'm famous for getting into a hobby. Like I'll buy expensive hiking boots and then never go hiking. Yes. So my rule to myself was: if we shoot five episodes, then I'll buy a a, a, a mic. You know. So nice. the first, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, 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 Chris had a good one that was like more positive, which was just like, uh, "Do you recall your first comic? Yes. Uh, do you guys recall your first comic? Uh, I do. Um, my first comic <laughs> was from Barnes and Noble." Uh, I was going through the section. I, I can't remember if I was on a date with a, with a girlfriend at the time or if uh, or I was just at Barnes because it's in the mall. Yeah. Um, when I was passing by there, the comic book sections and I was a fan of like comic book movies. And uh, I was going through and I was like, you know what? I'll I'll get a comic. So I go through and I see a character that I like, which was Deadpool. This is before the, the Deadpool movies had even sure. like came out or were announced. Um. And I was like, cool, I, I'll read a Deadpool comic. So I buy it, I take it home. I'm like, huh, it, they kind of just like jump right into it. Like, I, I'm not too <laughs> sure on like the backstory. Uh, little did I know, I picked up uh, Deadpool volume four. Ah, that'll <laughs> so, do it. So I, I read it. it. Also like a controversial run. I remember you were telling someone else about that book and they were like, that's oh, like not good yeah. dead, like Deadpool. It's, <laughs> uh, I still have it. Oh, it's Daniel Way. It's uh, Jess was telling me, uh, Omnidog was saying uh, that it's the worst Deadpool run or in his perspective. But yeah, uh, I read it. It's interesting. I now own all of them. So nice. <laughs> yeah. So my first book, which looking back on it, the context I know now, this should never be anyone's first book, but was final a trade paperback of final crisis. <laughs> That's awesome. I took it to like a church camp and like read it during the week. And like, I didn't know enough to not know what I didn't know about that book. So I was able to just enjoy it, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I was talking to a friend and he would loan me books. So he loaned me like, um, like 52, which I liked a lot oh, and cool. the infinite yeah. crisis trade, which I liked a lot. So, um, that was kind of like my start. Um, Love it. My first omnibus was green lantern by Jeff Johns one and infinite crisis one. I'm not sure which one I bought first, but nice. Um, so that was mine. Do you do you remember yours? Oh yeah, it was Spectacular Spider-Man number one seventy-two. It was uh, the first comic I ever bought. It was uh, the second part of a two-part Jerry Conway <laughs> Spider-Man versus Puma story, in which uh, you know uh, Spider-Man's in like New Mexico and he goes on like a spiritual fever quest to have the Spider Avatar within him fight the Puma Avatar within Thomas Fireheart, and then the two of them have a battle to the death in like 
you know, in the desert and uh, it, it's peak Sal Bashema art, uh, a really cool Jerry Conway story. And, uh, and it's, it, it's proof positive to Stan Lee's theory that like, you know, every comic is somebody's first, it's first like, comic. Yep. Th this is just like some, like, this is not telling you anything like Spider-Man, like he and like Spider-Man and Thomas Fireheart, like, sit across from each other in like a at a bonfire and like paint their avatars on their faces and then like their spirits jump out of their bodies and like it turns out <coughs> that like the metaphor is that if they do go to blows then they will both they'll, they'll destroy each other and uh they fight anyway and uh it's just yeah it, and there's a b plot of a character named jason jerome who's trying to seduce mary jane while peter's away and will he will he succeed you know and it's, it's like what uh, When's he going to be in the live action movies? You know, it, I don't know, man. Jason Jerome, you know, really fun. Uh, no, he's a throwaway <laughs> character. You know, it, but but yeah, that was that was my first one. That was very very detailed. <laughs> well, it's, that's the thing is, it's it was my first one, so like I read it a lot. You know, like mm. my copy is at the studio and it is torn. Like it, the the cop the cover is no longer attached. You know, ah, I see. Uh, it's and, and there's there's holes in it. Yeah, but it was just I'd read it, reread it. You know, I'd toss it up. I'd read it in bed. I have to go to sleep and then just throw it on the floor. You know, you kept reading it until it made sense to you. You're like, <laughs> yeah, well, I'd have to like figure out like how did Peter get there? You know, because it wasn't mm -hmm. like, you know, because of course, like back in the 90s, you know, you could have like, just gone on YouTube, right? And watch your favorite yeah. YouTube comic book YouTubers to uh, talk all about it. If they mm -hmm. talked about that story, which they definitely didn't, like, no one's going to talk about Savage Showdown on YouTube unless it's me. And even then, like, it's, but why? You know, the Puma is not a fan. He's a he's only like a very small fan favorite Spider-Man character. Like he's not in anything. Uh, Sony isn't even making a Puma movie. Okay, <laughs> Calvin and Hobbes would be my first two. But oh, I guess yeah. like I guess I I mean I view I didn't really view that as like a comic book as much as like a like a com comic strip. Bill Waters would be really strip. pissed to hear that you call it a comic book. Like, yeah, yeah. Because he, yeah. he hates he's coming comic out with books. something new though. I just saw that announcement. Pre-ordered it already. I can't wait. Um, but I. I'm a very much of a hard like hardcover collector, but I still bought the Calvin and Hobbes like if you can see in the little square down there, like the paperback. Oh, because yeah. for me, Calvin and Hobbes has to be paperback. Like, like that's just like what I grew up reading. Yep, yep. I have uh, I have mine as well. Like it's it's the older printed version where it's like uh, the three you know collections of each of them. Yeah, um, yeah. I can't even get them out because this thing is ridiculous. But yeah, it's uh, I get yeah. how protective he is of that, but like. Oh, an animated show would have been so good. <laughs> I, I I hear what you're saying, and I I think as but a I kid it. I definitely agreed. But now, like you know, but over time, like Bill's insistence that like he's like, but it's not what I want. I'm yeah. like, well, if Bill doesn't want it, then that's that. The only exceptions mm -hmm. I have are my my Hobbs, which I'm not going to sell. You know, so it's it's for me, and you know everything else. Yeah, here's my here's one of them. You know where it's like nice. So you went with the hardcover of them. Yes, yes. This was a nice. gift from years ago. So, um, mine, yeah, mine was a gift also. I, I love it, man. Like, it's yeah. literally like that, like, taught me to read as a kid. Yeah. No, I Calvin had an older cousin that gave them all to me. It's so important to uh, development. It's got, it, it, it's, just, it does the best thing that comics can do, which is it tells the story through art, but it also has words that accentuate the art. And if you read the book, when I say read it, I mean look at it as a kid when you can't read. I think it forces you to become a stronger reader because you want to read them. Like you want yeah. to know what they're saying because you're so entertained <coughs> by the art and the, and, and the, and the story that's being told through the art. And when you do, you will be introduced to a, a larger vernacular than yeah. you would normally as a, you know, as a kid who can't mm -hmm. read. And I so think it's important. cool. Is like, it's one of those things where you, you, I started out reading it, not able to read it. Then I read it. And now as an adult, I'm able to read it and get more from it than I got yeah. as a kid because like there's layers. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so important. It's, it's, you know, belongs in the library of Congress. It's like, it's the, it's the greatest comic strip ever made. Yeah. I, I agree. I can't believe I didn't even think about that, but I guess, like I said, I don't really view but it. Yeah, as it's like not a comic, a comic book. book. Like it's, yeah. yeah, but like it's a comic, you know, but again, like, but he also like, he and I don't agree. <laughs> on a lot of things you know we we'd agree on like so much about like the human condition and people and children and imaginary friends and so forth but like you know 
he has a real he has a real problem with comic books. I remember when I was big into web comics, uh, he, he was interviewed by someone about them, and he was like really negative about web comics. He was like, he's like, I, I I'm sure that by virtue of their existence, there must be outliers, but because it is democratized comics, they must mostly be terrible. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean that's harsh, but you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> He didn't mean yours, though. Well, <laughs> I'm sure he did. Uh, he, uh, because, yeah, because I sent him a drawing once when I was a kid, and he sent me back a form letter. So he did not appreciate it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, let me see. I know John we, Hamm, I like that. We had gotten a couple of questions in the, in the Calvin chat. Calvin Hobbes, if they make a movie out of Calvin Hobbes, it'll be after, it'll be pride from his cold, dead hands. His daughter will have to do it. I know you see what like Winnie the Pooh just entered the public domain and you see the first movie that they made. Oh, yeah. right? like, this, is, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> exactly. Like this is why. Yeah. This is why Disney is so fiercely protective of everything. Well, that and the fact that they're greedy. But yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm barely going through all the comments. They're hilarious. I love yeah. them. Well, we're not used to having this many live viewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's been a couple where it was just like one. Right. If oh, that. yeah. That's yeah. tough, man. Like, it's it's a tough yeah. racket. And especially as you like, especially today, you know, like I would not be. We would it would. I mean, you could see it like we launched a channel. Uh, two years ago. And it is 20,000 subs, you know, like it took nine years to get to like a hundred thousand. Uh, and that was with the benefit of like having been associated with like the largest channels. So yeah, it's a hard it's today. I would not. Yeah. My advice mm -hmm. would be to use a time machine and go back and do it into and in, in 2015. Yeah, man, I couldn't imagine having to like make decisions that like your audience enjoys, but the algorithm allows, you know, like how hard that would be. Mm -hmm. Luckily for us, like we would do the show if we had zero viewers, like for, for us, like yeah. we were, we were coworkers who love to talk about comic books and stuff. And then I stopped yeah. working at Best Buy yeah. and then the pandemic happened and we couldn't hang out anymore. So we started just zooming each other so we could talk about comics because like I had no one else in my new job to talk to about it. And right. then we were like, Hey, we should just start, you know, posting these. So, and now I've been able, we've been able to reach out to some of our biggest, like famous comic book YouTubers or like people that we've watched for years, like you or Omar or Jess and like to interview them. And it's, it's just like surreal, you know? So for us, like we do it for us. Like it's, it's fun. Good. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if you do it for yourself, then, uh, you know, you're already, you already have the best audience and, uh, the rest of the audience will follow. Cause like it's authentic. If, if you're doing it to like check a box or to reach a niche, you know, it's not necessarily going to work unless you know, like, unless you're like, you know, unless that's what you care about is like, is, yeah. is constructing something. But, uh, you know, like, like Mr. Beast, he was like, I just wanted to be a YouTuber. And I'm like, of, of what? And it's like, well, just being a YouTuber. And it's like, so he doesn't care what it is as long as it gets him onto the platform and, and, ma and makes him the money. And I'm like, okay, like, you know, that's, but that's not why mm -hmm. we're, you know we don't we don't chase the trends we don't do the thing you know we're we're it's so and it's already so niche yeah that it's like yeah. you know it's gonna yeah yeah but if, like you, a, if you make the thing you want and do and don't compromise on that it should well, that's why yeah. we make the joke like when we first started we weren't just comic books because that wasn't niche enough we were omnibuses and that wasn't niche enough so we were dc omnibus <laughs> yes <laughs> because nice. we couldn't be more niche you know right yeah, yeah. Eh, that might be a little too niche, but I, would... <laughs> <laughs> I might, might want to open it up to like maybe an Ant Man review or something. But uh, fair enough. Did you did you like Ant Man? Uh, eh. I thought it was mid. Yeah, like, it was mid. It was like it mid. felt like clearly there was more than just one writer on it. You know, I know that's not what they said. Yeah. Um, but like it just felt like there were so many different like plot threads that were just dropped. Like Ant Man didn't change as a character. Like. He no. was kind of happy go lucky in the beginning. Like if they had done the storyline of he lost time with his daughter, yeah. or if they had done the storyline of he's a celebrity now and he stopped being a hero and yep. they kept having different parts of different like arcs, yeah. but none of them followed through. And I was no. just like, no, the movie is, is, is mired with reshoots and, 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 and false starts and reboot and like restarts. It's, you know, it, it's, it's the result of a whole bunch of other, like factors you know like i think there is a real movie under there somewhere 
but it's been like reshot, recut, reworked, reinterpreted so many times before it even got to us that like, I, and, and the problem is Marvel's like not very good at that. Like Marvel was like, we made these movies, you know, like in like it or hate it, it, like here's Iron Man three, you know, and, and, but it's a whole movie with like a real character progression in it. And whether you like that or not, you know, we're still going to make a billion dollars off of it. Um, but like, they're not very good at being like, we're, we're just going to, we're just going to make like a, like a choose your own adventure movie that we, de we decide the ending of a week before we release the damn thing. Like, yeah. There was well, no congruency between the trailers and the movie. No, no. And, and that's because they made a trailer out of a different movie and you could tell, like, it's just, you've, and, and the worst is if you're, you know, we, I've seen director's cuts that are completely different versions of a movie or a completely different movie in general. And yet the, the theatrical cut is a complete movie. If I can't tell you've succeeded, if I can feel like there's, if I could see the editing, you yeah. failed, especially at this point, like then you've, you failed and, and you could see like there immediately. It was, there was choppy a moment, too. Like it would choppy. switch back and forth. Like there was a moment where like they did this transition from like a van or a bus to a, to a room. And, was, and it was just like, it was so jarring. And then when you notice it, you notice it all the time. And like the movie is just like, it's, it's it and and by the way like oh you know superficially speaking like it's fine you know like overall like you know story eh you know adventure sure character okay but uh but but you can see all the all the all the strings and it's like oh no yeah yeah and like like i just felt like maybe like they just wanted to make a fantastic four movie but they just used ant-man instead yeah like, i've heard that criticism i mean they the, the fact that they refused almost like danced around kang's real name still yeah. tells me that they're like they're still trying to like save fantastic four for something else yeah and i'm like just make it then don't dick around with like other things you know if you want to make fantastic four go uh we're gonna put thor 4 and ant-man 3 on hold and we're gonna spend the next year making a fantastic four movie like there, that yeah. will wait I guess like some of my gripes too is like I thought they like talked about I thought like in one of the previous movies like Janet Van Dyme had powers from being <laughs> in the quantum realm and then that right? never came up. Nope. And then I also like which weird which was weird to me is like in the ending of Ant-Man 2, they go back into the quantum realm to get the particles for Ghost and yeah. she doesn't have a problem about no. like she never mentions, "Oh, don't go back there, don't go back there," you know? Yeah. So Yeah. It just, no, it's weird. It really kind of seemed uh Yeah. Um yeah, it's it's mid. It was we, I hate to say got, it. we got Modox butt though, so like that was worth the price of Yeah, the it was movie. worth it. Yeah, right? It was worth like a billion dollars or whatever. <laughs> Modoc wasn't the worst thing about that movie. No, it was it wasn't. just the, like the editing was. I uh like the ones when he gets mad and he shoots like the laser out of his forehead, I was like, Oh, oh look at that. He did look bad though. Yes. <laughs> well, I better with the I'm... armor better with the armor on. Yeah, yeah. which is which is funny because people were mad. About the armor. They were like, oh, why isn't he a human face? Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I'm glad I uh, I know what I'm looking forward to when I watch the movie, because I haven't seen it yet. Oh, yeah. Well, enjoy. I, I, I look forward to it now. <laughs> Don't buy the bucket. <laughs> Don't buy the bucket. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say I've lost faith. I mean, they've made no. so many good movies. I'm so grateful for everything that's come out, so... Like not everyone can be amazing. Yeah, but I am disappointed. Like I, I, for me, I'm like when you put your when you overextend yourself, you put yourself in a position where you need to crawl back to where you were instead of just continuing on from where you are. You know, I That's saw that in TikTok, and I thought that was interesting. That um, technically, because of the ending of Loki, that's like the timeline change. So maybe yep. that's why. So hmm. retcon. I don't Could know. Could be. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm still excited for upcoming movies. I guess I just felt like if it's someone's third movie, it should have more stakes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they think it does, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you should still go see it, Jordan. Just like you said. Yeah, you got to see it. You know? um, I'm going to see it. It's yeah. not a question of if it's more when. Yeah. Well, so. I won't ruin it for you. Okay, thanks. Well, I look forward to I seeing Modoc and something yeah. not animated. Yeah. I liked the Patton Oswald show. I thought it was really good. It was funny. <laughs> I didn't even watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I it liked it more than nice. Hit Monkey. I didn't see that either. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I don't think anyone else watched Hit Monkey. I was just, I had, didn't have a lot going on at that time in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
No, yeah. there was literally like a time in my life when like every lunch break at work, I would watch a back issues and I would put one nice. on to go and go to sleep. And like, it was like a, after a bad breakup. So it was nice. At, at oh. catharsis. Well, yeah. I'm glad we could help, man. Thank you. Yeah. You're, oh. you're welcome. That's bad. Those, those, bad, those breakups dude. Um, but it, yeah, it's cool. So it's, like I said, it's amazing to be able to talk to you, man. This is really oh, surreal pleasure. for us. Same. No, I'm really, I'm really, I really appreciate you guys having me on. It's been a really fun time. You guys are very personable. It's a good show. So, you know, keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll try. I, I'm extremely busy. So like, for instance, today, uh, it, it almost became the thing where it was only going to be Jake to, to interview you today. Oh, uh, well, I'm where, glad it worked out, man. I'm uh, working that two job life and then oh, still God. have a podcast on the side. So, and it's hard that all of you guys are on the East coast. So like every yeah. time I try to interview like you or like, I'm setting up one with Jim Mint soon. And like, guys are always on the East coast. Yeah. yeah what, what's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, man. It's, yeah, it's a big coast. You, Omar, Jess, Jim, like, yeah. All over there, we are. I don't even know where they are, Canada. honestly. I don't know, like where I, I I do see them at like cons, but I don't know mm-hmm. where any of them are from. Don't tell anybody, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> that's so funny. We don't run into each other at all, like because we're all from different states. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, dude. Like we're gonna have we're in, a... we're in sunny California, which oh it, nice, which is rare. So I'm about yeah. ten minutes from Disneyland. Oh, yeah. that's cool. My uh, my girlfriend worked there for about five years, but she just wow. recently got a new job teaching now. So good for um, her. So, but now she gets to enjoy going to Disney with me because <laughs> before it was like work. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah, definitely. No, that's great. Um, but no, and this was really, really, really fun. Um, we have some upcoming interviews next month, so we're going to interview uh, Omar. I think it was March tenth, and then no, uh, March tenth is going to be Jim. Jim. So I got to yeah. see when our Omar interview is. But it's awesome. You guys are really approachable, which is really cool. So thank you. Yeah. I mean, I interviewed you, like, sorry, emailed you like three years ago and was like, hey, can we get you on our show? And like, <laughs> then I never like you said, like, yeah, let's do it. And I'm like, when would you be free? And I never got an email back. But I also then never I never followed up. But right. there was a pandemic going on. So, you know, we all had, you know, things. But uh-huh. I'm, glad we could, I'm glad we could finally make it happen. This was same, man. You know, no, really okay. awesome for us. Absolutely. So, no, my pleasure. Thank you so much. So definitely I, I can feel it. it's starting to wind down for towards the end of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I did want to kind of finish off on saying um, thank you so much for all the content that you make. Uh, you have been a huge portion of my life, especially in my teenage years and going into my adult years. Um, I know I'm getting a little sappy about it and just please. No, no, no. I, I, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. No, it's yeah. I, I, I've I've been there myself. It's you know, but but I'm glad we could be there. I'm glad we could make something that you like connected with. That's yeah. Something I never imagined when we did this was that anyone would watch it, much, much less care. And so <laughs> yeah. it, it, it hits me every time. So thank you. Of course. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much. He's got to go turn off. That, he's got to turn off that vent, right? I got to turn off that vent. It's, yeah. It's, it's still whirring away. I got to check the cameras, make sure it's not on fire. <laughs> uh, hopefully it is not. I, actually, I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to take a look really quick. Camera. Yeah, before we end the stream, let's make sure we still have a studio. You still have right? a studio to go back. All to. right, well, there's still books there. Okay, we're still all right. You know, we're doing okay. <laughs> awesome, That's awesome, so. man. I look forward to see your whatever other videos you come out with soon. Thank you, man. I appreciate you uh, saying that. And I'm 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 hard at work at them. I'm shooting. I'm editing two episodes of back issues literally as we speak. Well, not right now, but like <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's like, no, it's over there. Like it's, I have two monitors and it's sitting there. I was editing them and then I'm like, I gotta do this. Dude, show. If you were editing while you were on this interview, I was like, that's impressive. That would be yeah. it would be a very bad episode because I'm listening to what you're saying. So I would have to listen to what I'm saying too. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I I can barely listen to music while doing it. <laughs> it has to be the Tron soundtrack. Otherwise, it's nothing else. Awesome. Well, I th- I want to thank everyone that was here on uh, on our live stream and that contributed to the comments because, uh, you know, we, we do it mostly for us. But, dude, is it cool to see people interact with uh, the channel? Thank you so. for our new subscriber. Right. Oh, yeah. Riv, yeah. Thanks, dude. I saw that you uh, you said you subbed. So we'll be making content. Oh, Riv's great. So you're, you're you're getting a good sub out of that guy. Heck yeah, man. Thank you so much. Well, guys, thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out Sal on his show. But I mean, it sounds like most of these are your fans anyway. So uh, yeah. <laughs> for now. Uh, oh, for now, right? We're, we're coming. We're That's the, right. We're the young guns. That's right. That's right. That's true. Yeah. That's awesome. Have a good Got night, it. everybody. Bye, guys.